you know, we, we will often hear uh, promoting the notion that we should pay people more. Uh, but the reality is the we are the very small businesses that are the backbone of this state. Agriculture is the number one industry in this state. They rely heavily on manual labor. Uh, you know, the very people that this bill is designed to help are going to be the very people that it hurts. 53% of the people in this state that earn minimum wage are under the year age of 26, under 25. It are those jobs that are going to be the jobs that are cut. Every summer, all of us benefited from someone who was gracious enough to hire us, even though, quite frankly, probably many of us didn't return the value on what they were paying us. If we increase minimum wage 17 percent for those wage earners, the reality is going to be the already small job market for teens and college kids is going to evaporate. The other reality is there is an entire industry and a, and a market of laborers whose wages are based on some multiple of minimum wage. If we increase minimum wage, they're going to expect, if not demand, that their wages increase. The result is going to be layoffs. You cannot, and if you're in an industry does not, that does not control its price, we are not a walled-in state in the agricultural industry or in any industry. Our farms compete against Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Canada, Mexico, Brazil, Australia. We will exceed those wages. They cannot control the price we set or that they set for their product. The dairy industry does not control the price they get for their milk. That is set by a federal pricing order that is not being changed and is continually to compress the cost. If we add to their input costs, through labor increase, the reality is going to be they're going to be faced with making one of two choices. Close their doors and lay everybody off or lay some of their employees off because they can't afford to pay them. You know, the government did step in and look to address the minimum wage issue. It's particularly relevant when we talk about the agriculture industry. In the United States, we have a cheap food policy, but we place that burden on the backs of our producers. We spend in this country maybe 6 to 8 percent of our disposable income on food. In Europe, it's 20 to 25 percent. You know, we put that on the backs of the producers. We add 17 percent to their costs. They're going to lay people off because they can't afford to close their doors. And so rather than helping the laborers and the workers, we are going to hurt them by causing layoffs, and it's going to make it more difficult for our youth to get employment when they really need it. You know, it, it's not a terrible idea to look at ways to supplement through, uh, through wage supplements, I guess. The earned income tax credit does just that. The $15,000 figure uh, quoted by Mr. Wright actually becomes $21,000 or $22,000 with an earned income tax credit that gets added on. Let's put the burden, if we want to support and stabilize the workforce, rather than mandate it on businesses that are already struggling in this state and will crush them and cause them to close their doors or leave or certainly not look to come here, maybe the government should step up to the plate, enhance the earned income tax credit to look to provide stability there. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.